Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Well, next to golfing superstar, who's just become the third Englishman in 52 years to win the US Open. Matt Fitzpatrick followed in the footsteps of Tony Jackman in 1917, Justin Rose in 2013 to win the major title. So where did he get his inspiration for such greatness? I'll ask him in a moment. But first, let's take a look at that winning moment. <laughs> So, so close, and it's a dream come true for Magnificent Matthew, and the US Open title fits perfectly. Oh, <laughs> oh so proud of you. Well, I'm glad to say I'm joined now from America by Matt Fitzpatrick, US Open champion, no less. How are you? How are you? I'm good, Piers. How are you? Have you been sleeping with that trophy? Be honest. Um, it's been next to me every night so far, so, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Only you could win your first major by not actually doing anything, watching somebody else miss a putt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew, I knew you'd have an, you have an answer for everything, don't you? <laughs> you know what? Oh, it was absolutely incredible to watch it. And because I know you quite well, I know how much it means to you. Um, that moment when you realised you were the champion, you'd won your first major, you were the US Open champion, and then you turn and you, you turn to your caddy, who normally in that moment would be as jubilant as you, and he's broken down in tears, <laughs> Billy Foster, because he's waited 40 years to carry a bag for a, a major yeah. champion. Yeah, it's um, it was incredibly surreal. Um, you know, I, I know what it means to Billy and. And as you say, you know, you know what it means to me. And um, for me to, to to win a major, it's uh, it's ten million times better than I ever thought it would feel. Uh, I've got to admit, it's uh, it's truly been incredible. And uh, that moment when it, you know, when the putt missed, and and I knew knew uh, that I was gonna, I was the winner. Then uh, it was truly incredible. You're an incredibly fastidious golfer in the sense that you've made a note of every shot you've ever played as a professional, and you've kept all these notebooks. Um, why do you do that? And do you think that's been one of the reasons why you've ended up a major champion? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's I do it just to, you know, figure out where, where I can improve all the time, uh, where my strengths are, where my weaknesses are. Um, and I definitely think it's been a big part in, in helping me uh, succeed in, in my career so far, just because of... You know, I, I've got the information on where I need to to get better all the time, and and uh, because of that, I'm I'm using my time efficiently rather than kind of wasting it on something that might be a strength already. So um, I feel like that that's been a big part of my career, and um, you know, I'm certainly going to continue doing it, and uh, I think it's helped massively. You've gone from Matt Fitzpatrick, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, kind of nearly man not quite winning a major, you know, one of the pros, not a household name. And then now, suddenly, within 48 hours, you're on the front page of newspapers all over the world, you're on TV shows all over the world. Your life has just changed irrevocably. Are you enjoying it? Are you slightly apprehensive about what may now happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely apprehensive. You know, there's... Uh, you've seen it. With, with other guys that have uh, had success and then maybe don't play so well and, and some guys that have success and continue on to go and do more. It's, um, there's always a little bit of that at first and uh, it might take some time to sort of get used to, to everything that's going on. And, um, but, you know, I'm excited. It, it's, it's what I've worked so hard for to, to achieve this. So, um, you know, I've got to understand everything else that comes with it and um, just try and take it in my stride as best as possible and, and, and enjoy it at the same time. It's, like I say, it's, it's what I've worked for. So, you, you know, you, you've got to enjoy it once you've uh, achieved what you want. Absolutely. I, I read a fascinating uh, piece in the papers today that you were inspired in, in a way by a conversation you had with your ex-girlfriend, Denise, whose family are from Ukraine, and you had this when the Ukraine war started. And you spoke on the phone and she told you some stuff about her family and what they were going through in the Ukraine that gave you a new perspective? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that was that was obviously back in back in March time. And um, I think obviously with everything that, that's going on in in Ukraine right now and um, particularly obviously being being close to that and, and 
and having an, that experience of, of someone in, in uh, or knowing someone that has has is going through that, it was uh, it was obviously tough to tough to see and tough to understand from my side. But it, it, like I say, like you say, it made me realise that you know put things into perspective. At the end of the day, I'm only playing golf, and um, you know there's there's much worse things going on, and um, it, it definitely it definitely helped. Uh, you know my my mental game towards the, towards my golf and uh, and whilst I was playing tournaments. There was a story breaking just before I, I came out to do this chat with you that Brooks Kepka is likely to be the next recruit for this Live Tour, the Saudi sponsored sort of renegade tour. Uh, your brother was quite interesting about this. He said that you persuaded he's also a, a top golfer. You persuaded him not to join that tour, as you've decided not to join it. What, what do you feel about where this debate is now going, given that players of the calibre of Deschambeau and Brooks Kepka and other top, top players are now doing this and, of course, running the risk of being banned from the main PGA Tour? Yeah, listen, you know, it's it's their choice, it's their careers, and, and they've, they've got to do what's right for them. Um, for me personally, you know, I, I grew up watching the Open, the US Open, the Masters, um, the RBC Heritage on, on the PGA Tour, um, Wentworth, the BMW PGA at Wentworth on, on the DP World Tour. Those are events that mean something to me. Um, growing up as a kid, watching those, those are what I wanted to play in, what I wanted to try and win. Um, and because of that, that's you know that's that's why I'm committed to to the DP World Tour and and the PGA Tour because that those are the ones that I grew up watching. Um, and I think for me, like I say, it's 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 everyone else's decision that they you know they can do what they feel is right for them, and and I absolutely have no issues with that or whatever they want to do. But but for me personally, uh, I think. The right way to go um, is for me to stick where I am and, and play the PGA Tour and uh, the DP World Tour. So, um, but I think it's an interesting time for golf, and uh, it's certainly going to be interesting to see how it all works out. Is it going to have to be a deal? Do you think, given the, the sheer number of top players that are beginning to, to migrate over there, they're going to have to eventually say, "Look, play, players really," which is what I believe, by the way, should be allowed to play where they want to play. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I do, I, I do agree with you there. I do believe that players should should be able to play where they want to play. Um, the a lot of the times people say that we are independent contractors, which I, I guess we are. Um, so yeah, I do. You know, I, like I say, I respect where wherever people want to go, wherever they want to play. I've got no issues with that. Um, they've got to do what's best for them. Um, whether there'll be a deal, I, I you know, I, I, I couldn't possibly answer that. Um, there might be, there might not be. It's uh, it's obviously all up in the air. Um, you know, the the rumours of players leaving every day, and um, you know, for me, that's sitting on the outside of it. It's, uh, I'm finding it pretty interesting to to see whose name's going to pop up next, really. So, yeah. um, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. I've got some clips to play you, uh, each with their own little story. You may remember that probably the most <laughs> inspiring golf rounds of your career have probably been with me. Uh, one in the Come British you, Masters course, course. Pro-Am where you witnessed me actually getting a net hole in one and we have a video to prove that. <laughs> Here's the video. So Matt Fitzpatrick, obviously fresh off the Ryder Cup, could you tell me how I just uh, performed on that last hole, please? <laughs> well, obviously we didn't take your sh tee shot because it was finished short of the water. Right. How many did I score? But you managed to spawnily hole a putt for a two net hole in one. So Thank well you. done. Thank you very much, Matt Fitzpatrick. So I felt that playing with you, I just felt like I gave you that extra level of, of confidence <laughs> and bravado that you needed to make that next leap up to, to major champion. You know, I, I got credit where credit's due, Piers. It's, uh, that's all I was thinking about on Sunday was, you know, your words and your advice, your, your putting tips, your, your bunker tips. It's... Uh, <laughs> You know, forget forget my team. It's you know, all all, all the credit is is down to you. Thank you, <laughs> Matt Fitzpatrick. I'm very glad you're finally <laughs> recognising the massive contribution I've made to your victory. Um, the other <laughs> game we played, which was actually hilarious, was we played in in LA. You wanted a game, a warm up game. Yes. I got you on a course called Lakeside in Los Angeles. Lovely course with a lot of actors play there and entertainers. Vinnie Jones was our host, which in itself was surreal enough. And then halfway round. 
Joe Pesci from Goodfellas rocked up in a golf buggy. And here's the picture of us all together. Um, and all I remember is that you were playing great on the front line, but the moment <laughs> Joe Pesci turned up, your game collapsed. He kept staring at you, and you, you couldn't basically hold apart after that. Yeah, well, you know, uh, when you've got famous actors like that watching over you, it's, uh, yeah, that, that's way more pressure than, than any, any other event I've ever played, so... Uh, but no, we, we had a fun day that day. It was uh, very enjoyable, and um, it's uh, it's a great photo actually. I, I saw it the other day for the first time uh, since since it was taken. So uh, yeah, it was good fun. Well, I've got a little message for you from Vinnie Jones, who was watching your triumph, <laughs> and he's he says this. How you doing, Matt? Well done, son. So proud of you. Everybody is the nation is with you. I'm glad your bum weren't shaking in that bunker like it was when Joe Pesci came over and. <laughs> started watching us play golf at Lakeside. Well done, mate. We're really proud of you. Don't take too much stick off of Piers. We'll get you a better partner <laughs> next time. Cheers, mate. ta -da, boy. You say you want to win six majors, which would, of course, match you with the great Sir Nick Faldo. He's just, he's just quit today as a commentator. He's retiring. He's going to go off and do his golf courses over there. What's your, your feeling about that? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a shame. You know, Nick, Nick's great on the broadcast. Um, I know not a lot of people like him over here and um, been lucky enough to spend a little bit of time with him and, and pick his brain about a few things. So, um, no, uh, enjoy my time with Nick and I'm, I'm sure he'll enjoy his uh, full retirement now. Now he's, uh, he's not doing that anymore. He'll probably get a bit more time to play golf again. Well, Matt, you're already sounding like an experienced major winner. You know, you've got the kind of cool... The cool chat now, haven't you? It's all very... You're almost McElroy-like now, so I have every confidence <laughs> that, given the help that I've given you in your career, given we've now got a major under our belt between us, uh, you'll go on to ever greater yeah, absolutely. things. absolutely. Uh, but honestly, mate, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. You're one of the most down-to-earth people I've met in sport. Your family are fantastic. I'm so thrilled for them. Billy's fantastic, your caddy. And I think everyone's just really chuffed for all of you. Congratulations. What a moment for you to be the US Thank you. Open champion. Thank uh, and I'm just so glad you agree it's all down to me. <laughs> Thanks, Pierce. I appreciate it. <laughs> all the best, man.